Hello guys, this is Panzermeister36. In today's video, we are going to be continuing on with the Tiger I from the 506th Schwerpanzerabteilung. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make some dirty and dusty effects on the upper surfaces of your tank. I'm going to use a couple of oil paints for these effects. Nothing too complicated, but I think it's a quick and easy and overall great looking effect that gives the tank an overall dusty look. You can also emphasize the crew hatches by making them look dirty. And you can also apply some rain streaks that just generally make the tank look nice and weathered. I hope this video helps you guys out and gives you a little bit of inspiration. Anyways, let's get started. Now I bet when I said dusty effects, a whole bunch of you guys thought about pigments because they seem nice and dusty, I guess. The fact is though, I don't like pigments too much because they don't really dry permanently on the tank. They can easily be wiped off. So I much prefer using maybe oil paints or enamel effects or even certain acrylic products that are meant for weathering. All these effects are liquid, so when they solidify and dry, they're not going to really come off your tank if you handle it. But if you have pigments all over your tank, and you start touching it, they're going to come off, and that's never fun. Let's look at the products I'm going to be using today. I want to keep it a little bit simple, so I've only selected two oil paints. I have the MIG Ammo Oil Brushers Starship Filth, which I'm going to use for dirt, and also dust, which is for dust. I also have some Wilder Enamel Thinner, which I will use to clean off my brush between steps. And I also have some VMS Oil Expert Enhancing Medium. This is to thin down the oil paints and to speed up their drying time. Also, since everybody's always asking me about my paintbrushes, I'm going to explain them beforehand. I have a small round brush here. This is an AK Interactive 3 over 0 round. This is going to be for the application of the oil paint. For blending, I have a couple of brushes here. This one I don't really use that much, but it's useful. It's a number six flat brush, I guess. This is what I'm going to be using mostly. This is a 1 8 inch angular shader by Royal and Langnickel Zen 73 series. Basically, it's got a bunch of short and stiff bristles, which makes it really, really good for dry blending oil paints. Now, the MIG Ammo Oil Brushers, I don't really like this built-in brush for applying the oil paint directly to the model because it's too big. So I just use it to apply the oil paint to my paper towel, and then we're going to go from there. I'm going to put some of the VMS Oil Expert into a little cup here so I can apply it with my paintbrush. And I've also done the same with the Wilder Enamel Thinner for cleaning my brush between steps like I said before. To begin, I'm using my small round brush, and I'm going to get it damp with the oil expert, and then I'm going to grab some of the oil paint. This way I get a little bit more thin mixture, and also has the oil expert in there so it dries a little bit faster. I'm going to begin by applying some of the darker oil paint to simulate built up dirt effects. So I'm starting on the fenders here because there's going to be a lot of kicked up dirt and stuff when the tank's just driving around in general. So it's going to kind of collect in the crevices here. And also near the back, there's going to be mud getting flicked up by the tracks. So I'm going to apply some streaks here where there's going to be a lot of moisture and mud being built up. Now I'm going to clean off my paintbrush with some enamel thinner. And then I'm going to get a little bit of the oil expert on my paintbrush. Just a little bit. I'm going to blend the effects I just applied. I want to feather out some of the edges and also make some more precise streaking effects because what I just applied on there with the paintbrush originally isn't really smooth it's just kind of like globs of paint it doesn't look great this is supposed to be more of like a collected dust effect so it really needs to be more uh, feathered at the edges and more blended out you can see that I can very easily make some streaking effects by simply dragging the paint up and down and that either kind of erases the effect or makes more streaks depending on basically if I'm going up or down. Some of the streaks I applied beforehand, like this one right here I'm working on, like I mentioned before, it's not really that nice at the edges. So by rubbing at it gently with a paintbrush with some thinner, I can better feather the edges to make it look more natural. Weathering Zimmer is a little bit weird because it's really texturous. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the oil paint up here as well and also feather that with some thinner. 
let's move on to a different area of the tank. Around crew hatches is a good spot to apply a lot of dirty effects because these areas see the most use by the crew who are constantly walking around with their dirty boots and just making a mess of things basically. So I'm keeping the dirt mostly around the actual hatch itself, but I'm also thinking about where the crewman is going to walk to get up and down the tank. I can also leave sort of a trail of dirt where he would be walking. So right here, I have, after applying it, I am once again blending the effect with a little bit of thinner by just gently tapping at the edges to diffuse the edges. Now in some areas, if I want more subtle effects, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that 1 8 inch angular shader I showed you a minute ago, and I'm going to dry blend the effect. This is different because there is no thinner on this brush. I am simply rubbing at the oil paint I applied about five minutes ago, and I can just move it around and kind of just push it into the corners where I want it to stay kind of built up around the tools here. This effect is good for more subtle built up dust that's maybe just settled on the tank as it's been driving around. What we did before was more like actual footprints and more specific applications. This effect now is more subtle. I'm going to show you some more effects on the turret. This is the same thing I was doing before, but we're just going to look at it again in a couple of different areas. So as always, we start by applying the dirt basically where it's going to collect, which is around corners and around crew hatches. Every so often I clean off my brush and then I get more thinner on it and then I get some more oil paint and continue the process. On this angled plate on the front of the turret, I didn't do so much built up dust. Instead, I focused more on some streaking effects where it's washed down from the plate above. All right, let's get started blending the effect. Once again, I waited about five minutes before blending this and my brush is slightly damp with some of the VMS oil expert. I'm using my brush here with some thinner to blend these effects because I want more precise streaks in this area. Later on we're going to do the dry blending where I want some built up dirt. You can see here I'm also using my brush with the thinner because I want that area to be more precise, almost like a little dirty puddle. And now here I'm using the dry blending effect because I want this to look like dirt that's collected kind of around these details, I guess, on the turret, because it's going to kind of collect in all the crevices and corners, and also, of course, around the hatches where the crew is walking around the most. I think this dry blending effect is very straightforward, but one of the key parts to it is having this type of brush with short bristles because that really makes it easy to blend. This hatch on the back of the turret I don't think it's used very much, it's more of like an escape hatch or for loading ammunition, but still I decided to make a little bit of a, a dirty area around it to make it look like it had been used. Alright, so now I'm going to apply the second layer of effects using the dust oil brusher. My process is basically exactly the same, but I should point out that there is no varnish applied between the, this and the previous effect. I simply waited about six hours because since I use the VMS oil expert, the oil paint dries much faster than usual. These oil brushers are a modeling oil paint, so otherwise I would have probably had to wait about 24 hours or so before I could apply the second layer, as you see here. But the VMS oil expert made them dry even faster. So like I said, I could wait about 6 hours and apply the second layer here, and I didn't have to worry about removing the previous dirty effects that we did you know, just a minute ago in the video. So I do like the VMS Oil Expert. I think it's a great product because it saves me some time. I don't have to wait for varnishes to dry or just wait for the product to dry because it dries much faster. So let's look at it in a little more detail on the turret. As you can see, the process is the same as what we were doing before with the darker color. But I'm just using a second color because I want more variation to the finish. If you'd have just one color of rust on your exhaust or just one color of dirt it doesn't look that nice because in real life 
everything has multiple colors to it because there's you know there's di there's dry dirt there's dust there's everything and you also end up with stuff getting mixed in there from the crew walking around some areas might be a little bit more wet and so they're a little bit darker so i would recommend at least using two colors because that just steps up the realism so much you can use three or four but honestly i think two is enough in this case you can see the blending is kind of just i'm just rubbing the paintbrush and tapping and stippling and everything and it's really really easy you just rub the paint into the finish basically because we have the satin varnish on there from like three or four videos ago when i apply the pin wash the surface is a little bit smooth and that lets you blend the paint in easily but since it's not super glossy the paint will still stick otherwise it would be just wiping off that's why i don't like glossy varnishes i prefer this semi-gloss or satin varnish that we looked at like i said when we applied the pin wash in the first place Here I'm just applying some more streaks like we did with the darker color, but now I'm doing some more dry streaks with the dusty color. Same thing. I also decided to add a couple of final streaks, just basically around where I have some built up dust near the vent at the top there, and also around the corners of the loader's periscope cover. This just maybe simulates some rain streaks or anything like that. I just want it to look like, you know, there's been dirt collecting on some surfaces, and then when it rains, maybe it just gets run down a little bit. It's pretty straightforward. Alrighty, now our tank has a very nice dirty and dusty look to it. It didn't take me very long at all. I spent about two days on this, of course not working the entire days. I did first a dirty pass in the morning of one day, then that evening I did the dusty effect over top of that. And then the following evening, I applied some more dusty effects. So it was a total of three layers. As I was saying before, usually with oil paints, you have to wait at least 24 hours between each layer. But I could actually cut that down to about six hours when I used that fancy VMS oil expert. Because that really helped cut down the drying time of oil paint on the plastic finish of a model. I am very pleased with the effect. Overall, you can see that it's very, very straightforward. I simply applied some paint kind of messily. And I just took my brush and just kind of smeared it into corners where I think it would collect. That's half the process. The other half is applying it in areas where it makes the most sense. So of course, around these areas of the fender where there's going to be a lot of mud kicked up. Around the crew hatches where the crew is walking around a lot. Those areas also build up a lot of dirt and other crap. On the front of the hull here, I added a couple of dirty spots to make it look like the driver had been walking up this plate to get to his hatch. And I also added a little bit of a dirty handprint or something here on the gun sleeve also from the driver maybe just little things like that add a nice interesting look to your tank i hope you guys enjoy the video and i hope you guys think my tiger is looking pretty good i am very pleased with it i'm having a lot of fun building this along with mr night shift if you somehow did not yet know that he's building a tiger run over on his channel you really should go check it out because he is an excellent modeler and his tiger is looking i'm gonna say it better than mine for sure as always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Those guys really help me out making these videos. And if you can support me, it is much appreciated. I'll see you guys next Friday with another video. Until then, happy modeling.